founder and partner of Granados Ventures, Pierre Hannes, joined us here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to start off with an easy explanation of what venture capital is and how does it work. So venture capital in a short form is basically the first risk capital that comes into any company. Uh, in the life cycle of a company you have, generally you start off with angel investments which are friends and family, but it's the first formal capital that comes into a company after the angel investment is complete. So uh, the differentiator be between angels and venture capital is that venture capital brings also expertise, brings networks, brings connections, so there's a lot of value add work that's completed. Uh, and often brings the company to the next level where they can continue to grow and scale. That's the difference between, let's say, formal investment and less formal investment. You're a co-founder of Granada's Ventures, which is basically backing Armenian startups. I, w I would like you to talk a bit about Granada's Ventures and its activities. Sure. So we have uh, started now almost 10 years ago in Armenia. Uh, my partners, we met uh, in Singapore, so I was doing venture capital in Singapore at the time and the idea to start a fund in Armenia was floated. At that time Armenia was very young in the whole ecosystem, so we were very much focused on software outsourcing. But I think we saw an opportunity that the country can transform itself to, uh, from services into product. And we've seen that transformation now over the past, well, 10 years. We started uh, providing the first formal uh, sources of capital and investment for companies locally. Before that, there were really no sources of uh, capital available. And uh, I'm proud to say now we have over 20 investments. We have now two funds. Uh, we have several exits and some successes, very successful companies that uh, in our portfolio. And uh, we're very bullish and positive on the Armenian ecosystem. There's a lot happening here, as you know, as you can see from this Digitech conference. So we're, we're very happy and we think that there's a long-term game for Armenia in the global entrepreneurial ecosystem. Digitech Expo is a big opportunity for local, both local and international startups and companies to represent themselves. And I want to ask you, what are your expectations from this kind of event and this one in particular? Yeah, so I think the most important with these events is really highlighting the country. We remember that Armenia, until maybe five, seven years ago, wasn't very well known. In fact, uh, most people hadn't heard of it at all. Now you have several companies like Pixar, like Crisp, like CodeSignal that have put Armenia on the map. You have a couple of important investors in the United States as well. So from that perspective now, Armenia is starting to show up as an important ecosystem here. Uh, I think conferences like this are very important in continuing to bring and highlight uh, the, the importance of, of the country, the relevance of the country. Uh, to the global ecosystem and some of the potential of the country. So Digitech is important. It's important that we draw more people to Armenia because one of the things that we need as a, as a local ecosystem here is talent. We're a small country, so talent is being grown internally, but it's also important to bring and attract talent from overseas here to establish and, and basically transfer knowledge from different entrepreneurs to local entrepreneurs. So that's very important, that cross-breeding. So Digitech plays a very important role in, in all of that uh, hybridization of, of knowledge, effectively. So we should have more of these uh, and get hopefully more attendance as the years go on. And you've talked about Armenian startups. And one question that has always bothered me is that the biggest Armenian startups are not registered in Armenia. And I know that the, um, the legislative regulations are also very helpful for all VCs for working there more efficiently. And I want to ask you, um, as an investor, from your perspective, what's the um, what's that bothers the investors that they only want to invest or mostly want to invest in companies? companies that are um, registered in Silicon Valley or other places yep. and uh, what can do Armenia in like regulations in that form to improve sort of that these startups won't have to be registered somewhere else and Armenia can benefit from it. So I think actually I think that's it's not a disadvantage to, to be registered overseas. The, the one of the biggest considerations as an investor, as a VC investor, we always look at what's next down the, down the funding road. So. Uh, in order to survive, a com company needs constant capital injection. So investors outside of Armenia, especially American investors or European investors, they're comfortable with jurisdictions where they understand the legal framework, right? So there's a legal framework, a tax framework, and because their funds and their LPs have certain restrictions, certain requirements as well, it's important that we fit in within that framework. 
So I think it's not a disadvantage. For example, all of our companies, most of our companies are headquartered overseas. All of them have local subsidiaries. Uh, it's not necessarily that it has to be only the US. Of course, now you have Dubai as a good jurisdiction. You've got Singapore as a fantastic jurisdiction. And of course, other co countries like India, China, etc. Uh, but really, the most important consideration is the follow-on capital. And follow-on capital typically is comfortable in investing in jurisdictions that they're familiar with and where they have legal protection. So since they're not familiar with the laws and regulations yet of Armenia, since there's not enough experience, right now it's more convenient and compatible for Armenian startups to directly be uh, incorporated overseas with their headquarters to facilitate the next round of capital. Uh, going forward, for example, if we have other companies that are incorporated locally and they tend to be playing in the local markets or treating the regional markets. But if one is looking to scale globally and access global capital, it's important that we be in a jurisdiction where investors, follow-on investors, are familiar and comfortable. And I want to talk about past year, which was full of challenges for the tech industry in general. I want to know what challenges did VCs face during past year? So I'd, I'd say probably over exuberance. There was a lot of money printed. There was a lot of money invested. Uh, now I think we're seeing the reality settled in. So a lot of companies were funded without solid concrete business plans or even necessarily products. Uh, that shakedown is happening, but this is part of a normal cycle that happens every five to seven years or so, uh, where there's an exuberance and then there's a sort of settle into reality. And I think the best companies are the ones who have great products. That's number one. It's not about who has the most capital, raised the most capital, but it's those who have the best products and those who can manage their investments carefully because many companies have raised a lot of capital and spent that capital quickly. And now if they're not producing either great product or have some revenue traction, they're facing a lot of difficulty in raising the follow-on capital. So that's a trouble and, and good managers, uh, good companies with good management understand that customer's priority, product is priority, and then cash is always king. So if those three things are managed, then, uh, then you're likely to be a survivor. So we try and instill that same discipline in all of the companies that we invest in. And our, we scrutinize, uh, when we look at companies, we look at particularly the team, we look at the product, and, uh, and we look at the market fit as well to make sure that there is a path to, ultimately a path to growth, because growth is what we're investing in. We're investing in the growth, the future, and the possibility of the, of the company moving on to the next level. Due to these challenges, it seems like that VCs are proceeding more cautiously than before. I want to know, are there specific fields that are being funded or being avoided? So, you, know, you may know that VCs tend to work in uh, cycles and trends. That drives a lot of the, the VC business. But I think the savvy VC investor will be able to look forward uh, in terms of what are the upcoming trends and technologies that are going to be used and, and the upcoming demand that's going to be used and work backwards to try and figure out what the current need is and to, to fulfill that demand going forward. So uh, right now the biggest buzzword today is artificial intelligence. Uh, I think that's a game changer. So obviously the first was the, the, the computer, the portable computer, then the internet and then the mobile phone. Then so now after this mobile phone, is, it's data. And so all of this data is now out there. We have to make sense of it. It's artificial intelligence is one of the key drivers. Uh, it's going to be very important. It's going to be also changing. It's game changing. What we focus on particularly are solutions to fundamental problems of humanity. So these, are, these can be the application of technology, in particular software to areas, for example, biotech, to energy solutions, to productivity solutions. These are, these are some of the areas that we like to, to look at because we see them as the highest growth and we see them as the biggest demand in terms of uh, just consumer and, uh, and business requirements. And um, talking about startups, especially the ones that are just starting, what are the main characteristics to receive funds for or what do they should pay attention to while communicating with investors? Again, it's all about the customer and the product. They have to be, customer has to be satisfied, the needs have to be satisfied. 
and the product has to be world class. And, and I think um, one of the challenges is really understanding what is that customer demand. Understanding value chains, understanding you know, where markets are moving, where trends are moving, understanding industries deeply. That's really what we look for. We look for people who really understand their domain that they're operating in. That's the most important thing. Then is the product world class? Is it applicable? Uh, has it been tested? So especially at our stage, it's important to have some kind of test uh, minimum, minimum viable product that has been at least prepared, tested, and some data to support the fact that it works or its efficacy. And, of course, a very strong team, uh, not only just uh, in terms of, really in terms of cap execution capability, that's one of the key items that we look at as well, a team's ability to execute and a team's ability to be flexible also. So not just uh, be able to produce, and, and develop, but also be able to change if, if suddenly they want run into a wall, they have to be flexible. So flexibility is key, team is key, product is key, customer uh, satisfaction is key. And I would like to finish our conversation with talking about future a bit. And the tech industry is growing and developing in a tremendous um, way. And we see that every day it gets harder and harder to think of something new, to create something new and to compete in global market, especially for startups from countries like Armenia. I want to know what's hot in tech in 2023 and what are investors looking for? Sure. Well, again, the hottest topic is going to be artificial intelligence, energy solutions. These are really the, the problems that are impacting humanity today. Uh, biotechnology, so healthcare. Uh, those are the really uh, what we look at and what I think is, is going to be a key driver for future investment. Uh, the market for ideas has now become democratized, so it's true that innovation is no longer exclusive to Silicon Valley or exclusive to very few places around the world, which in one case does open up to the competition, but it also opens up a tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for entrepreneurs everywhere, including our own entrepreneurs here in Armenia. So, Thank you very much for joining us. It was a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. <laughs>